Hello and welcome to the Rook's Nest. Alex here. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to create these procedural clouds using the Volume Builder in Cinema 4D. I'll then go on to show you how to render them using Redshift. So without any further delay, let's get started. So here we are inside Cinema. I've already got my scene set up with my lighting, uh, materials, a plane, sphere, in order to keep this tutorial as short as possible. But for those who care, I'll go over those at the end. First, let's just focus on creating these clouds. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is come over here, just grab a cube primitive. Let's stretch it out along the X and then along the Z and we squash it down its Y like so. Now this is just going to be the basis for our volume. Uh, we're going to be displacing and deforming this cube, putting it in a volume builder, and then using some shaders to then affect it even more. But let's get this cube suitable for deforming first. Now let's fill it the edges. I give it a nice roundness, maybe increase subdivisions. And then because we're going to be displacing this cube uh, primitive, Let's increase the segments along the X. Do it around 100 or so. And then along the Z. And maybe just a few there for luck. Now we've got our base primitive. Let's start displacing it. So let's grab a displacer object, make that a child of the cube, and then come down to the displace options in shading. Shader, let's load in a noise. Now, if we click on this little image here, give us the options for our noise. Now, the noise type I'm going to choose is called turbulence. We just pop that on. As you can see, it's already starting to affect our primitive. Let's increase its scale because we want it to be like a more cloud shaped. Uh, so 1700, 1750 around that region. Uh, and then on our U scale, let's stretch it out maybe to 200 just to try and because clouds aren't normally round, they normally seem quite elongated. So, so just 200% on the U should be fine. Uh, let's also increase the contrast because at the moment you can see it's a bit soft. We get more contrast in this cloud pattern, maybe 50%. Let's type it in 50. And also, if you come back to our displacer, go to the object. Let's modify the height just to get, there we go. So that's going to be the basis for our volume. Now in order to turn this into a volume, we're going to need to create a volume builder. We just take our cube, make it a child of the volume builder and it disappears. But as you can see in here, it's made this voxel grid of our object. Now the first thing we're going to do is when it comes to volume builder on the object tab we're going to change it from volume type to signed distance field to fog and now we get these dots in the viewport once again we're still not seeing anything in the redshift render view and in order to start seeing our volume we're going to need to create a volume shader so if we come down to here into the materials and go create redshift material and select our volume material and we take that volume material put it on our volume builder still nothing that's because we need to open up our material in the shader node shader graph select our rs volume and in our scatter channel this drop down box here we need to choose volume builders and volume builder and there we go now we start to see our cloud also, at this point, I should mention that my lights, my dome light and my area light, in their volume setting, their contribution scale is set to one, both of them. If you don't have any volume contribution on your lights, they won't illuminate your volume. So make sure you've got your, on your lights that in the volume tab, your contribution scale is above zero. I've just got these set to one, it just makes it simpler. Now let's just uh, increase the resolution of this volume quickly, just so it's a bit nicer, five. 
You don't want to go too high with this number or low because it'll start to slow down. If I show you, if I go to one, for example, it will give you this warning. We have a long calculation time, which we want to avoid. So we cancel that. Uh, say for example, like two, probably a bit better. It already looks better. But this is working five. It'll update faster and we'll be able to get things done a lot quicker. Now let's make this look more like clouds. Do this quickly. So we're going to come up to our come up to our fields, get a shader field, make this a child of the volume builder, and then in our shader field we're just going to load in a noise. In order for this shader field to act the way we want it to, we need to open up this volume builder, come to the shader field, and in the creation space we want to choose objects below. That's just going to use our cube object or our cube primitive as the reference for the area in which it's filling this shader field in. If it's just a box, it will just be a small 100 by 100 centimeter box in the center here that the shader is affecting. So back to objects below. Uh, normal mode is fine. Now let's check our shader. Come into the noise. Let's select our turbulence, which is down here. Uh, we're going to make it large, just like we had in our original. So maybe make it this, maybe not this exactly the same size as our displacer, but maybe a thousand. Let's also stretch it along the U by like 300, uh, just to give that elongated cloud look to it. Uh, we're also going to want to increase the contrast to this. As you can see, look, it's very flat at the moment, and it's not doing anything really. So let's up the contrast. Let's give it, I don't know, let's say this, let's put the contrast at 50. See what we have. And that hasn't changed much. Let's reduce the, increase the contrast, the low clip. There we go. So we see, we start to see it breaking up as we bring in this low clip value, bring this up. Nice. Now, if we see, it does look a bit rubbish at the moment, but if we go to like say two on the voxel size, once it's calculated down here, it does see sometimes it can take a while. But there, there you go. So we're getting these breaks in the pattern. Let's just check our shader field a bit more. Let's maybe bring in a bit more. Let's bring in more gaps. Oh, see, see it's being slow. That's because I'm the voxel size is a bit too high or low or too small. Let's go back to five just to help speed things up. It would help if I had a faster computer at the moment, but I don't. Uh, okay, back to the shader. There we go. So now look, you can see getting this actually quite a nice cloud pattern. I, mean, it's, I quite like it. So I'm going to leave this as is right now. And let's focus on our, let's add another shader field. So control drag, click control drag above the shader field to create a copy of the first one. Let's come into our shader list. We can see it's already been added because we've dropped it under the volume builder. Here it is. Let's change this mode to additive because we want to add to the clouds. Uh, then let's go open up our shader field. Let's change this noise to something a bit different. Let's use stupor. Here it is. Or you can select it from this if you just want to look around at the things. I always I always you choose this because I can sometimes I forget which noise does which, but you can see quite well from these images what they kind of look like. So we got our stupor. This one we don't need to be as large. It's going to be a more a smaller detail. But I think this is going to be our wisps, as if like long pieces of the cloud that are like wispy, if that makes sense. So make that like six hundred. Once again, we're not really seeing anything in the viewport. Um, we can see it here, so we should be adding these bits to our clouds, but we can't really see it. And I think one of the main reasons for that, let's just reset. Um, let's just get this back to zero and all the stuff back to normal. Uh, maybe have a bit less contrast. Maybe let's just make sure we can see it first, actually. So if we come to the volume builder, let's go, let's make this two. 
to update. Now if we turn this shader on and off, yeah, as you can see, it's having absolutely no effect. And that's because, once again, our creation space is set to box when it should be on objects below. As soon as we do that, it will update the volume. Give it a second. There we go. Now, well, this is far too intense. This is not what we want. So let's open up our shader field one. Take a look at this. Now let's drop the brightness of this down. We only want it to be filling in a few bits and bobs, a bit, a few gaps. Let's also, while we work, reduce our voxel size to five, just to help speed things up, help the renderer. Now let's adjust some of these values. Coming in there. You see we're getting these extra, if we turn it on and off, we're filling in and if we drop the brightness, you know, we can, you can, you can choose how much of those little extra cloud bits you want. I think I want maybe about that much. So whether just by lowering the brightness. Yeah, we'll leave that as, as you can see, it's very blocky. It won't look like that in the end. So now let's add a, let's do another, let's duplicate this shader field. And now I'm going to add some more finer details to this. I'm going to change the noise type to Booyah. And we're not going to have this one stretched along any axes. So we put this down to 100%. Uh, but we are going to we we'll leave the global scale at 300. Uh, let's go into our volume builder, change the mode to additive. And then once again, make sure that it's objects below and not box the objects below. So make sure it's affecting our volume. Then in the shader, you can see it's quite minimal at the moment, but it should be adding these little fluffy bits. But let's just increase the brightness to see if we can see a bit more of them. And in fact, for this, it might be quite difficult to see them. Oh, there you go. You can see them in this larger voxel, but let's just drop down. I'll say our voxels to three quickly just to get an idea. There you go. It's starting to look better. In fact, let's just do it down to two. Now, the next thing we're going to be doing whilst this builds the voxels is just adjusting this material because at the moment you can see it's too dense, thick, doesn't really look much like cloud. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up our RS volume so let's adjust these coefficients for our scatter and absorption. We're not going to be using the emission because we're not really having the clouds emit anything, but let's start with our absorption. So in fact, let's turn our scattering down so we can see kind of what the absorption is doing. If we get rid of it completely, we can see that it's not scattering any of the light. At the moment, it's just absorbing light. And so if we reduce the abs absorption, you can see it gets thinner and thinner until we can go all the way down to zero. But I think you want it probably around 0.2, so we can still see through. It's quite nice. Now all we need to do is up the scattering. If we raise this, let's do it slowly. You can see as we increase this, we start to increase the amount of light that's being scattered around and bounce back towards the camera. If we just raise it up, they get lighter and lighter. I think in the end I settled on something around 0 0.5. And that gives it this really wispy, cloudy look. Looks like I might have gone a bit overboard with these dots. Uh, but yeah. And so we, we can also introduce a bit of colour into this. If I just add a slot here and not oh actually it's best if we just do this drop down select the knot oh we can't see the whole thing right select the knot and maybe we want it to be a slightly red 
maybe like an evening hue. So we can just introduce a little bit of color into the clouds. See, that's quite nice. Uh, you want to leave this black and this white. If you have this any other color other than black, uh, you won't get proper shadows. Uh, it's good if you want, say you don't want your shadows to be black, you want them to be red. Then you can do this and then your whole thing. You see you get no shadow areas. But if we just whack that back down to... And same thing with the white at the end. You want the brightest thing to be white. Uh, unless... I'll show you what happens if you change it. I mean, it doesn't really make much difference. But you just want to make sure that your shadows are black. Another little thing to take note of is in the advanced tab, there's this thing called shadow density scale. Now that, when we change it, if I put this up to two, you'll see we're getting much harsher shadows. So if you want a moodier, more contrasty look, you can up this. It won't affect the density of your clouds. Uh, I think in the end, I went with something along the lines of 0 0.8. Obviously, this all depends on how thick your actual volume is. So you might want to, this, you might want to do this on a case-by-case -case basis. Yeah, so well, that's that. Uh, I'll just give you a quick look around my scene that I promised at the beginning of the video, if anyone else is interested. If we go to our camera out of the camera here, you can see all I've got is this plane, which is this material here. All it is is a C4D shader with a gradient, 512 by 512, running into a texture, RS texture node. Uh, you can see nothing interesting there. Uh, that's just so that we can pipe that into, take, this, take the C4D shader, put it into a texture, then pack it into the RS material in the diffuse color, and it's just a fully diffuse material. We look at the base properties, like there's no reflection and it's fully rough. Uh, and then the material on the ball is essentially just a, R on, uh, a max on noise with a stuple. So the stuple noise played around with the overall scale and just did a color ramp on it to give it variations of color on the surface and then just a roughness if i show you if i got close you can see just to give variation in the roughness and then obviously the bump and a bump map i've just put this straight into a bump and reduce the height scale and i think that's about it oh and the lights i've just got a dome light with a HDRI in it from HDRI Haven. Uh, it was a free resource, a place we can get a bunch of HDRIs. It's great. Uh, you should check them out. I'll put a link in the description. Oh, and just before you render, you might want to change your voxel size and your volume builder to something small like one. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I recommend you go off and have a play with some different noise patterns and shapes and sizes. See what you can come up with get creative and if you like this tutorial please subscribe give us the thumbs up if you have any questions or suggestions please leave a comment the project files the animation you see on screen now will be available on our patreon so please check that out link is in the description yeah well that's that uh, thanks again for watching bye